Welcome to Genealogy Resources in the New Orleans City Archives and Special Collections at New Orleans Public Library. I am Amanda Fallis, archivist, certified archivist, and a Master of Library and in Information Science. So let's start with an overview of the City Archives and Special Collections. What we basically cover is Louisiana, New Orleans, and the Gulf South. Um, we do have expertise in Louisiana records in general, so we include that as well. Uh, we are the city archives for the city of New Orleans, uh, one of the oldest cities in the country, and our archives likewise have records dating back as far as the 1760s uh, during Spanish rule. Um, we are, of course, home to a special collections, which are sort of uh, additional collections that we've gotten in addition to the uh, records of the city of New Orleans. Uh, we have a genealogy collection, which covers a little bit uh, all 50 states, but primarily uh, Louisiana and the Gulf South. We have reference materials and original materials, original materials being the records of the city. We have printed materials such as books, uh, family histories, genealogy, uh, periodicals, uh, any sort of printed material. We have a lot of photographs. We have over 10,000 photographs in our collection, many of which are digitized on our website, which I'll give to you shortly. And of course, we have plenty of microfilm. A great deal of our records have been microfilmed, which is very nice. However, um, we haven't been able to digitize them quite yet because we are a very small department. Um, and of course, we offer online databases, much like you uh, can access here at Allen County Public Library through the Genealogy Center. In fact, I would wager to say they probably have a couple more than we do. So here's more in depth about who we are. We are the official archives for the records of New Orleans municipal government. So the city council, the mayor, all the little agencies, that's we are where the records of enduring value come. Uh, they were transferred to New Orleans Public Library's care by an ordinance in 1946, and we were incorporated as one of the, or records management was incorporated as one of our responsibilities in the city charter of 1954. Um, the earliest records in the city archives date from 1769, and those are the acts and deliberations of the Cabildo, which was the Spanish government when we were under Spanish rule. Here's a quick tour of um, our basement. As you can see here, these are some building permits. These are uh, many city council records and many um, extensive court records, which were also the repository for the uh, parish judicial system. Uh, as you can see even more, these are mayoral records of Ernest N. Morial or Dutch Morial from the late 70s, early 80s. City Planning Commission dockets. Um, everything that the City Planning Commission's been up to and approving is right here in these dockets, which we continue to get. And we can move on to the beginning of the presentation, which is going to be navigating our resources. I'm going to explain to you how to use our website, how to determine what you can get remotely, um, which we are offering expanded remote things depending on the type of record because of um, you know the times that we live in, COVID. Um, but also um, it will let you know what you can get in person, what you can get remotely and what we can offer you. So this is our page. Our page is archives.nolalibrary.org. And this website was created by um, our previous two archivists, uh, head archivists, uh, Irene Wainwright and Wayne Everard, a married dynamic duo that were responsible for uh, transferring all of our finding aids, you know, encompassing the several million original records that we have into a digital format starting in the mid 90s. And they are responsible for this totally comprehensive website. If it is a record in our collection, um, you can find a description of it. All of our collections are described here. And they also have links to our photograph collection and other digital galleries and, and stuff like that. If you want to know if we have it, this is a good place to start. I'll explain more as we go on. So the big thing, the big meat and potatoes, especially for genealogy, are going to be our guides and finding aids. So as you can see here, we have a nice research guide. We have um, information on search and copy services, which to be honest, um, we do um, maintain certain fees, but honestly, since we've gone all virtual due to COVID, we've been waiving a lot of those as we can. You know, usually we will offer like, you know, five easily 
copyable items for free before we start charging. Um, we are the city archives, so as you can see there, it's organized by the agencies, the courts, the mayors, the city council, all the important governing bodies. Then there's links to our photographs and digital galleries, which are fun just to browse, even if you don't have anything specific to look for in New Orleans. Um, it's, it's just a fun uh, swath of images, primarily focusing mid-century, like mid-1900s. Um, there are the special collections that I was referring to. So these are sort of like attendant collections that weren't uh, passed to us by the city, but um, we still ended up uh, in the possession of. It would be stuff like we have some WPA materials. We have a map collection of original New Orleans maps going back to the early 1800s with a couple late 1700s in there. Uh, manuscript collections, which are, uh, you know, uh, citizens of notes that one of their papers held with us. Uh, we have um, early sheet music and we have these uh, wonderful um, menu and online pamphlet collections, which are really interesting. If you want to know the history of New Orleans restaurants, just in terms of looking at their menus, you can certainly do that with us. Um, Genealogy is the bread and butter and what we'll be covering primarily today. So we have a lot of stuff in genealogy and I'll go through that beat by beat in a moment here. And then of course, we're actually a great uh, resource for property research in New Orleans. Uh, property research is a little unique here. So uh, we have a guide that was authored by our previous archivists that kind of give you uh, really exactly how to do it in New Orleans. We don't have house deeds, we have um, property uh, conveyances. Um, and let's see here. And then newspapers and serials, which we have a lot on microfilm. Um, we don't really have so many in um, physical format anymore. Well, we do, but if they're on microfilm, we're going to have you look at the microfilm. And we will make copies from the microfilm if you have a citation, too. So let's focus on genealogy. These are the primary bread and butter resources, which as genealogists, you're probably makes sense to you, which is our first is the Louisiana Biography and Obituary Index, and the second is our Guide to Genealogical Materials. The first one is self-explanatory. Um, starting in the 40s through the 70s, um, volunteers and WPA employees went to the trouble of scouring all New Orleans papers and indexing the obituaries, and then we later digitized those in the early 2000s. And then there's the Guide to Genealogical Materials, which relates all of the materials in the city archives that are of genealogical significance and use. I'll start with the guide for y'all. So as you can see, this was a guide that was essentially created um, in the mid-early 2000s and, of course, transferred online. As you can see, it was actually published uh, until at least through 2011, which we did not reprint the guide in 2011. Sorry, I need to update that. But as you can see here, all of our records are categorized by typical genealogical markers, birth, death, burial, marriage, civil. Um, and so each of these sections will tell you what we have, the years that each collection covers, because it's always different, and you know, um, perhaps give you information on additional places to look. So let's start with records you'll probably have to visit to use, even, even with our, you know, the current situation, which uh, that includes certain court records, uh, city and parish archival records and documents. So to, to make that make sense, it's like when we have like those city planning commission minutes that I showed you in one of the initial um, pictures, those aren't digitized. So you would need to visit to view them. So it's going to be certain records that are too voluminous, like as in there are hundreds of millions of pages. So there's no way with a staff of four total running the city archives and a full public service desk that it ever could have been digitized. And to be honest, we only recently got most of our scanners in my time here. Um, but we have some local burial records that it must become and viewed in person. Um, at least a majority of them are on microfilm, so if you have like some idea of what you're looking for and we can easily access them, we will like offer digital for you. Of course, if you just give me a name, that, um, that it's more difficult to do that way. I, it, I'll explain more. Um, there are non-digitized newspapers, but not a lot. There are building plans. We are the official repository of important building plans in New Orleans. And then there are some genealogy books, are there, as there is everywhere. Everywhere there are genealogy books that 
are only in your local library. And we have some like that as well. And then of course there are some hospital and church records that you can only come into view. Although to be fair, um, many of these were microfilmed by the, uh, um, the Genealogical Society of Utah. So if you have access to a family search affiliate um, library, which I'm wondering if perhaps Allen County is, um, you can view some of these online. So here's a more in-depth way to recognize record availability uh, through our website. So if a record is available on microfilm, you'll see the uh, little um, cute abbreviation MF. It'll be seen in the description somewhere. You'll know it's a microfilm record. So depending on whether a record was ever indexed or not, meaning like somebody went through, found all the names and wrote them in an alphabetical list, it'll depend on whether we can just you know, search them remotely for you or not. We'll let you know what the situation is, depending on what type of record it is. Uh, usually we will note if there's an index or not. If there's not an index, it may turn into, you'll wanna save up for, um, you know, your big trip to New Orleans in five to 10 years <laughs> and uh, kind of note it for, for that research time. Um, there's always, um, we don't really have microfilm available for interlibrary loan because we've never exactly had the purchasing power to duplicate most of these roles. So um, what we have available easily is, is early records, pre-1863 records. Those, those are available for interlibrary loan on a microfilm if you need them. Um, you would need to email us directly to check availability because I know your interlibrary loan librarian um, is not gonna have direct access because we hide them from the interlibrary loan systems. Um, as you can see here, you must come in to view most of our film, meaning not all of it is indexed, but we'll let you know. So this is an example of a record that's only available physically, and these you would have to come in, or if you needed to, hire a local research based in New Orleans to come and view for you. But basically, there's not going to be an MF anywhere in that description. Um, it's just gonna say criminal court, and then it's gonna go into the description. It's not gonna say anything about microfilm. We do try to do a note in the collection description at the top that'll say what availability is available. And of course, if it is available physically, yeah, it's, it's something that you would need to come in and view because a lot of our records are very old and we're not really in a position to safely reproduce them at this point. Records available digitally uh, will almost always have a link to where it's available. Uh, many of our records are available digitally through Family Search. Many are available um, through Ancestry. Many are available through uh, unique state-based things like uh, LSU and the Louisiana Digital Library. I'll have information on all of those later. Um, we try to always put a link next to it. We are updating our links, so if the title doesn't work, just Google what the link title said. And there's probably a note in the collection description, as I said. City archives, records, and database services. This will be of the most interest to you if you are not in New Orleans. So we have records in all of these services, whether it be Ancestry.com, Family Search, Heritage Quest, Fold3, probably My Heritage, and some of the other ones that I'm not as familiar with because we don't have subscriptions. And then um, there's a large uh, volunteer project that is uh, nation-based that um, is actually getting a visual revamp right now called the US Gen Web Project. But let's start with what we have, just a sampling of what we have in in the established digital. Um, digital databases out there. There's the ubiquitous familysearch.org, which is free to anyone. You don't have to pay, you just have to sign up. And um, my favorite thing about it is of course their wiki. If you wanna know where to find the records for any county in any state, or in our case, any parish in Louisiana, uh, you can go to familysearch.org slash wiki, go to your state and find out. And they, I think they even have that level of uh, detail at the uh, global level too. But um, here's, here's kind of a, a few of the highlighted collections. They have like the state penitentiary records. They have Louisiana Confederate pensions, which are probably also on Fold3 as well. There is some indexing available on our state archives website. There's Union and Confederate service records. Orleans Parish Estate Files, 1804 to 1846, which is wonderful because we generally refer people to FamilySearch to view these records. The, the um, 
the detail, the quality of the scans is impeccable. You can zoom in so far, you can download them, etc. And that's primarily because if it's available digitally or in microfilm, we will not retrieve the original anymore because they are so old. They are so fragile. We don't want to handle anything any longer than after its usability is passed, um, which was admittedly over 100 years ago for most of our materials. Uh, if it's available digitally or on microfilm, that is the format in which we'll do it. And in this case, for these estate files, these Orleans Parish um, court records, it's going to be through family search. Um, there's also, of course, the second district court, uh, same story. Parish will books, again, the same story. All of these Orleans court records, um, all of them are held by us, but if they're available digitally, that's the way we'll refer you to them. And then we have some more of 1812 pension lists, but this is not all of it. This is just some highlighted collections. Digital newspapers. You may have a subscription to Genealogy Bank or newspapers.com um, yourself at home, or you will have access to many of them through the Genealogy Center, it's quite likely. What we offer directly through us is, um, like our database subscriptions are going to be uh, News Bank, which provides us with the Daily Picayune, the Times Picayune, which is the main newspaper of New Orleans, the New Orleans Item and States, which were mid century or late 1800s to mid century newspapers that were later subsumed in the Times Picayune, uh, the States Item, which was when the items and the states merged with each other, but were still run by the Times Picayune at the same time before they were just absorbed in the Times Picayune. <laughs> Sorry, it's confusing. And then, of course, the Times Picayune and Advocate, which um, the Times Picayune was sold to an outside party post Katrina and then rebought by the Baton Rouge newspaper, The Advocate, in 2012. Um, I'm sorry, not in 2012, in 2018, but you know, our digital offerings are from 2012 to present for it. And then, of course, newspapers.com, which has various small newspapers, many of which it's wonderful that you can access through newspapers.com now, as opposed to from our microfilm, because previously that was probably the easiest way to do them. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, so we, I understand that the way Newsbank works in terms of library and free subscriptions, free subscriptions through libraries, is oftentimes they're sold in local packages. So you'll have, you know, your state and the couple of states around it, which is our situation as well. So if for some reason your state, your, your local public library, wherever you are, only has, you know, your state plus the five states around it and you're nowhere near Louisiana, you can sign up for a non-resident card through New Orleans Public Library for only $50 a year. And you can access that way the southeastern um, newspapers.com and all of our local New Orleans newspapers. We have almost all New Orleans newspapers from 1787 to present on, news, on, on microfilm. The earliest one is from 1802. We do have an early newspaper from France, from Paris, it has some New Orleans content, but it's generally available through other means as well. Um, our earliest New Orleans-based paper is Moniteur de Louisiane, and that's from 1802, and it's in French. Many of our early newspapers are in French. Um, they do eventually tend to uh, branch out into French on the first page and English on the second page, um, not always exactly mirroring the information on both, but to a degree for sure. Um, our first English language New Orleans paper is Louisiana Gazette in 1804. Um, we have a lot of, on microfilm, papers from other Louisiana towns and cities. Likewise, newspapers.com does as well. We have a few out-of-state newspapers for, for um, when, when it's a specialized uh, resource, such as early African-American papers. Um, and of course, if you didn't know already, most genealogists use newspapers to find obituaries. City directories. So city directories are unique in that Ancestry.com and HeritageQuest offer our city directories for New Orleans from 1861 to 1960 and uh, uh, up to 89. So that means how do you find the city directories from prior to that? There are some partial transcriptions on US GenWeb, but your main methodology is to just email us and ask us to perform a search because we have 1806 to 1861 on microfiche.
and it's it's easy for us to do a search of those for for you um just specify the year and the name and we'll do it of course again uh 1866 to 59 microfilm ancestry heritage quest 1960 to present those are available in physical books ancestry heritage quest some years may be missing or were not published that's very common they did not run these every year they were uh commercially authored directories um thus there was no government mandate saying that they get their business together and do it every year for example you'll note that they were sporadic during the civil war and world war ii this is what they look like on ancestry.com uh this is exactly what it would look like i have louis prima local musician highlighted here but uh, this is exactly what we would be going through and uh, what you find on family search for, or I mean, uh, ancestry.com for the years that we have as well are exactly the same. We don't have any, for the volumes that are on family search, uh, heritage quest, ancestry.com, we don't have any secret versions that are different. Um, it's really only the pre-1861 ones that um, you would, you would want to come to us for. Let's talk about our obituary index. So we have pretty comprehensive obituary indexing for Orleans papers through a couple of different locations that I will uh, cover now. So the main thing as shown on the link on our website is Louisiana Biography and Obituary Index. Uh, it was started in the 1930s and 40s by the Works Progress Administration volunteers, in which point they went through all of the browned uh, newspapers that were in the city archives and index every obituary or death notice that they found. It's not 100% accurate, but there's quite a few in it. And in this sort of uh, was continued by volunteers up through 1972, and then further continued by volunteers beyond that, but on a different site. So our searchable index covers 1804 to 1972 right here on the website. And I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. You search by surname, first name, middle name, date of death, um, if you uh, haven't, um, if you if you don't have as much experience with searching, one of the keys to searching is just start with the surname, i.e., the last name. Just start there, and we have a couple of tips for using um, various wild cards and stuff for your searching. But if you don't, um, the fewer fields you fill in, the more results you will get. Of course, if your last name is Smith maybe go ahead and go with the first name or at least you know the first few letters of the first name here's an example of a search i did which i searched for mcmurray and um out of my mcmurray returns i chose henry b and this is what it looks like um if the death date was noted they'll put it in there um it usually is noted it's just not always like right there at the top but the citations are what's important here and it, what it will give you is the name of the paper the date that the obituary ran, which is not necessarily the same date they died, as you can see here, and then the page and column number. Uh, when you make a request of these to us, if you find your person, it's, it's always advised to check the index first to see if you can find an entry for your person and then to email that to us. And if you don't have immediate access to one of the databases, we can go ahead and just get a copy for you and email that back. Um, there are a couple of other free um, directly local places, which is there's indexing for the times pick obituaries 1972 to present, which we actually have a link. Um, if I could show you, um, let's see here if I have markup, maybe not right now, but, um, as you can see over directly to the left of the big red search, the index, you can see other new Orleans obit indexing project. And that's where you're going to find these items that I'm about to, um, describe on this page here, which that's the usgwarchives.net. You click on that, you can go to that directly. And then there's some obituary indexing at Jefferson Parish Public Library. It's very limited, it's six years, but you could at least do a type search for 72 to 78 if you wanted to that way. The big one for continuing after 72 um, is the Orleans Parish US Gen Web page, but they have a lot more from the parish. They've done a lot of um, volunteer transcription over the years. Uh, it's always free. It's always easy. It's, it's, it's very basic. It's very, um, you know, old school HTML, much like our website is. So no shade there. 
but um, they have partial transcriptions again of city directories. Of course, if you don't find your person here, come to us for sure. They do have the Times Picayune Obituary Index through 2012, and that is their main asset. Uh, from 72 to 2012, this is where, you, where you'll want to turn to search for people, and it's a year by year thing. They do have some birth certificate indexing, um, which you can also get at the state website, which I'll show you. Same with death certificate indexing, because New Orleans was one of the first um, municipalities to uh, record any of this stuff for quite some time in, in Louisiana. And then, of course, there's a marriage certificate index and, of course, much more. Let's start with vital records. That's birth with an asterisk. There's a heavy asterisk on birth. And there's marriage and death. And let me tell you a little bit about vital records in an Orleans Parish in Louisiana. So as I was just mentioning, they were not required by Louisiana state law until 1918. And to that end, most other parishes didn't start creating them for very long before that. Older births and deaths are available through our Secretary of State website. Um, older Orleans marriages are available through the Secretary of State website, and other parish marriages are generally only available through that parish's clerk of court. Now, just to clarify, parish is what we call counties here in Louisiana. We're the only state that does that, but when we say parish, unless we're speaking about a Catholic parish, a church parish, when I say parish, I generally mean the county that I'm talking. But each county has a clerk of court, and that's generally where marriages stay until they're more than 50 years old. So here's an explainer of our uh, limitations, which we are a closed record state here in Louisiana. So that means records are kept closed to all people except immediate family members as defined by the Department of Health for a certain amount of years. So births that are less than 100 years old and deaths and marriages that are less than 50 years are only going to be available to immediate family members through the Louisiana Department of Health. Immediate family member, as I understand it, is um, parent, grandparent, child, grandchild, brother, or sister. You have to be one of those people to request a birth certificate that's less than 100 years old. Newer marriages are exclusively at parish clerks of court, for sure. Some New Orleans records can be found on microfilm at the city archives, but they are duplicates of what's available through the uh, Secretary of State. So if you can't make it directly to us, you can still get them through the Secretary of State. And then again, as I said, select parish um, clerk of court records have started to pop up on the free Louisiana clerks portal, which is, is completely free. You can sign up for and look at various parishes to see what's available. And of course, they'll have the contact info for the parishes too. So birth certificates. If you're looking for a birth certificate, don't call us. <laughs> um, we don't hold any birth certificates, even on microfilm. You have to request them from the Louisiana State Archives, the Louisiana Department of Health, or as I'm calling it often, Office of the State Registrar. And again, as I mentioned, before 1918, very few birth certificates were issued outside of Orleans Parish, but what is available is at the State Archives. All of the birth records are at the State Archives. That's because Louisiana law stipulated that the State Archives would continue to house um, all of the uh, birth records in, in their entirety. There are other methodologies for finding uh, birth dates uh, in the absence of uh, municipal birth records, which I'll explain in a little bit. So indexing for New Orleans births through 1899 is available in Ancestry and Heritage Quest, the U.S. GenWeb Project, and in the Vital Index at the State, Vital Records Index at the State Archives, which is my preferred method, which um, it's, that's sos.la.gov, meaning Secretary of State. That's what the SOS stands for, .la.gov. And I'll show you a little bit more of that in a bit. This is just an example of a birth certificate from 1860. As you can see, um, we have the day, we have the date, and we can see uh, right here, Pierre Lacoste, duly commissioned and sworn recorder of births, marriages, deaths in and for the city of New Orleans and parish of Orleans personally appeared Mr. Joaquin Viasca from um, Catal Catalan, Spain. Um, he showed up and he explained that, uh, let's see here. Do 
he declares that on the 23rd of August last was born in a house situated on Levy Street, a male child named George Joseph. And uh, this was the uh, issued from the marriage of uh, Paul Gelpi with Isilda, I believe. Uh, if, can't read the middle name, Vyoska. But so that's basically the information you'll see in a birth certificate. Um, death certificates. So we do have the death certificates from 1804 to 1915 available on microfilm or through mail from the Secretary of State. So what the Secretary of State has is an index. Um, what you do is you go through the index, find your person, and there's a little instructions on how to uh, request a form from them. Um, after 1915, uh, you'll want to go to the Louisiana State Archives for death certificates that are more than 50 years old. Uh, so essentially, I think at this juncture up through um, Let's see here, what was it, 1971? Um, you can get those from the Secretary of State. And of course, if they're less than 50 years old, you'll need to go to the Department of Health, the Office of State Registrar. Death certificates. So indexing, there's indexing for New Orleans deaths on microfilm and online, um, both in the main popular services and of course through the Secretary of State. Uh, there are a lot of death indexing on USGW archives and there's indexes on, um, let's see, uh, indexes for micro on microfilm online. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I've duplicated myself twice. It's the 1804 to 1949 there. Uh, and then of course there's the vital records index of the Louisiana State Archives website, which I will always say is my favorite. Um, this is the kind of information you can get from Louisiana death certificates. Of course, it's different for every state and sometimes every county, but it, and it does vary over time period, but generally what you should be able to get from a death certificate is a name, a place of birth, an age, a profession, a date, and sometimes time of death, the place of death, which down to basically the street address, and the cause of death. Um, it was usually given after the mid-19th century, and it was always if the deceased was a child. Earlier death certificates show the parents or spouse, the place of birth of the parents, the deceased marital status, and the name of the person making the declaration of death, as we saw in that example for the birth certificate. So very similar. And this is an example of one from 1891. Um, we can see here that, uh, that Mary Jacob, lawful wife of Marceline Clouseau White, a native Alsace branch, aged 65 years, departed this life this day, 3rd December, 1891, at, uh, I believe, Scott, uh, the corner of Scott and German Streets in this city, New Orleans. The cause of death was imperfect gallstones, which they knew, and then the certificate of the doctor, uh, P. Berger. So that's the kind of information that you can get from a death certificate circa 1891. Marriage, vital records, marriage. Um, we do have a fabulous Orleans Parish Justice of the Peace records of marriages 1846 to 1880 that were wonderfully microfilmed by the Genealogical Society of Utah in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, in, in one of these, and, and is also available for, uh, you can see them on the index of the Secretary of State website, and um, they are not necessarily on the Family Search website, which is the Family Search is essentially the website of the Genealogical Society of Utah. But um, they, um, I believe, uh, offer microfilm between family history centers as we have a microfilm as well. But um, just the, the index is completely on our website. I'll, I'll show you a little bit more in a minute. Um, but you can just email us and request it and we'll get a copy of it from the microfilm for you. Um, certificates for Catholic marriages, which a majority of New Orleans was Catholic, can usually be obtained from the archives of the Archdiocese, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about them soon. Um, the other place to get uh, New Orleans marriages is the Recorder of Births, Deaths, and Marriages and the Board of Health Records, 1870 to 1915. So that gets you from 1880 to 1915, which is nice. Um, these are the ones that primarily give parents names. So from 1817 to 1915 is when you can use a marriage record for parents' names. 
again, um, we have them on microfilm, but the marriage is after 1880, but more than 15, 50 years old from Orleans Parish are available at the state archives. Less than 50 years old must be obtained from the Orleans Parish Clerk of Civil District Court. Um, marriages in other parishes, as mentioned before, remain with the clerks of court in the parish and some are digitized at laclerksportal.org. Now our big thing on our website is that we have indexing for these records. So you can search by name for the marriage records from 1846 to 1880. It's actually easily accessible through our guide to genealogical materials. You just go to that link and then go to marriages, and, but here's a very long URL. Don't worry, you don't have to type it in exactly. And if you ever can visit us in person, um, these are all from a physical card file, an index card file that we still have. There are, of course, Board of Health records. Ancestry has them 1831 through 1920. Um, they have indexing, rather. Um, and then there's also some indexing on Orleans Parish GenWeb. And then, of course, there's the microfilm, which um, we have indexed microfilm through 1994. Um, of course, keeping in mind that an index is just a confirmation that the name or the record is there. It is not the full record. And then, of course, again, as always, the Secretary of State website. So this is what it looks like, um, our marriage index from 1846 to 1880 on our website. And uh, it's organized alphabetically. You can go by groom's name or bride's name, or on our main page, you can just type in a name and search and see if you get a hit. Um, you, what you'll get from this information is the date of the marriage. And this is what we'll need to make a copy of it is the date, the call number, and the page number, as well as their names. So everything that you see in this chart is what you would want to send email to us if you want to request us to make a copy of this uh, marriage certificate for you. This is an example of a Justice of the Peace marriage certificate from 1854. So it's an earlier one. So as you can see, we have the date and we have, I celebrate the marriage, solemnly united the bonds of matrimony, Mr. Henry, I believe it's Omican, and Catherine Rosty. So um, there were witnesses, and those are the only other people that were really named. As you can see down here, we have the signatures of the witnesses and the signatures of the contracting parties. Uh, there's not a lot of information on these early ones, but this is what um, they look like. There's also multiple justices of the peace because Orleans had a very complicated court system that was divvied up into districts, and you just weren't to the nearest courthouse to get married, generally. Um, this is the Secretary of State Vital Records Index. So this is how you would get to it up here at the top. You would go to sos.la.gov, and then you would click on, as it's circled here in the picture, historical resources, and then research historical records. And then you'll see a little article, and at the bottom of the article is a link to the indexes. Again, the Secretary of State is for vital records that are available to the public. The Department of Health is for records that are closed to the public, as we discussed earlier. You can mail order birth, death, and marriage. I am not sure if they are offering digital now since, since the pandemic, but you can at least do the mail order directly from the website. And again, just to reiterate, we didn't require vital records certificates until 1918 here in Louisiana. This is where I wanna start discussing the Catholic sacramental records in Louisiana. So where the municipal records fall short, um, the Catholic Church was an incredibly um, uh, meticulous and an incredibly widespread record keeper for Louisiana. There are several dioceses, and all of them are united under the governance of the Archdiocese of New Orleans. Well, not so much now. Now each diocese sort of gar governs themselves. But New Orleans was generally the Archdiocese, and then there were several other dioceses in the state. And when you can't find a vital record for something, you generally want to turn to the Catholic sacramental records that are available. Now, not every diocese is easily available, but I will go over um, which ones are and how to contact them. So uh, each diocese uh, maintained um, a portion of the state and handled birth, death, and marriage records. Um, in this case, when they're sacramental, uh, they were known as baptism, burial and funeral, and uh, marriage um, or uh, sacraments. So basically, if you can't find it there, you may want to check the Catholic records. If you can't find it with the Secretary of State in the, in the, in the um, 
secular records, you'll want to check these Catholic sacramental records. And that's even if your relative might have been a Protestant. Uh, especially in places like New Orleans, the Catholic Church was so ubiquitous that they just recorded um, some Protestant records as well. So let's get into this. Sacramental records in Orleans Parish and Louisiana. They are available through the diocese and church that um, issued them, and each one will have different available, each diocese will. Um, these records, again, often go back much further than civil vital records. Uh, they go as far back as the late 1700s for New Orleans, or really mid-1700s. Um, there is a series of books where a uh, father named Father Hebert went through um, some of the uh, more rural dioceses and transcribed hundreds of years of sacramental records and put them in books, which I'll um, describe. And you may be able to access either do through the various dioceses or put in a request through us. It depends. You may have to come in. So um, the most readily available records are, of course, the ones from the Archdiocese of New Orleans. They have a website listed here. Uh, you'll want to go there to find out more. Now, they're an even smaller staff than us. They have like two people. So they do things almost exclusively through mail order, and they do charge fees that are, um, you know, noticeable, usually $12 per sacrament. Um, the other dioceses in Louisiana are the Diocese of Baton Rouge, which is definitely the second biggest, and they have plenty of remote services available. They are also a very small um, but dedicated staff, and they're really the second biggest diocese, no question. Um, so uh, they are easily accessible. I do highly recommend them. Now there is the Diocese of Homa. They do have contact information, um, but you would need to contact them for what they can offer remotely. Uh, Diocese of Lafayette as well, same situation. You'll wanna check out what they say. And then currently the Diocese of Alexandria isn't offering um, genealogy services because I believe they may just not really have more than one person and they're just trying to organize the records. Um, so these are the books as I was discussing. If you look along the bottom, like the Diocese of Baton Rouge um, authored um, books of the records through a certain time period. Um, the uh, Orleans Parish uh, offers them up through about 1831, after which point you need to contact the diocese directly. And then as you can see, there are these other two from uh, Donald Bear, Father Donald Bear, which um, South Louisiana, he he noted he notes what they're what they cover, and um, Southwest Louisiana, he notes what they cover. So really, what you're seeing here is the Diocese of Homa for the South Louisiana records, and the uh, Dioceses of Lafayette and Alexandria to some degree for the Southwest Louisiana records. As you can see, there are a whole bunch of um, information here. So if you want to request one of these books. You could always try to do it through your interlibrary loan um, at your local public library, or you can check a website called worldcat.org to see who has listings, and then at some point you'll be able to enter your zip code and it'll tell you who's closest. But um, again, uh, your local public library's interlibrary loan, you can search for these titles through them and see if they're available for request. So on to burial records. Burial records. A list of municipal cemetery records is available on our website. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. It tells you what's available. Um, there's not a comprehensive index to any of these. There are multiple indexes from all over the place recounting um, different levels of, of coverage. Um, there, uh, some of the places that I recommend to start with are Find a Grave, always start with Find a Grave. There's some other websites like NOLA Catholic Cemeteries for many of the Catholic cemeteries, as well as SaveOurCemeteries.org and LA-Cemeteries.com. Um, but there's no one-stop shop, really, or Find a Grave is the closest you can get to a one-stop shop for searching records, but it, it is, again, not comprehensive. Um, because New Orleans is a predominantly Catholic city, um, many cemeteries are Catholic here, and, and they'll, they'll have sections for Protestant burials in the Catholic cemeteries, especially the earlier ones.
but always, even if your relative it wasn't necessarily Catholic, it's still worth contacting the Archdiocese of New Orleans to search for burial records. Again, we've got a link to them again right here. Um, let's see here, office, and I'm sorry, I haven't like done the, eight, the um, link correct here, but it's nolacatholic.org slash archives dash and dash records. I seem to have cut out my archives here. Um, and then there's New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries. So New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries is a sub office of the archdiocese and they work in conjunction with the Office of Archives and Records to sort of keep up the cemeteries and, and uh, manage the records. So just a tip for burial records. Um, if you don't know the cemetery, because there were so many, um, you want to ask yourself some of these questions for clues that can help you decide what cemetery to look at. You want to know what was the religion of the deceased. You want to know to a degree where the deceased lived, although this is not necessarily by any means a, a way to determine where they were buried because there were far fewer cemeteries than there were churches. Um, you will, of course, if you know where another family member is buried, be able to perhaps determine that your family member was buried with them. Um, Many, and of course, many of the cemeteries were segregated, um, so race and ethnicity matter. And then, of course, the family's financial circumstances. Um, did they have enough money to purchase a tomb or to purchase a spot in a tomb? Um, let's see here. Well, let's talk about civil records and genealogy departments in other Louisiana parishes if you want to branch out past New Orleans. So, clerk of court records. Parish clerks of court hold records relating to marriages, conveyance, which is the transfer of property, and probate slash succession, which is the estate, it's the will, it's the transfer of property um, via death and inheritance in Louisiana. Uh, when tracing enslaved ancestors, because slaves were considered property, you want to probably check conveyance and probate records for mentions of slaves, possibly by name. Um, what you'll want to try to find out is, of course, their uh, the name of the owner or the plantation they worked off on many times. But that is uh, conveyance and probate records are very key to trans uh, to uh, tracing enslaved ancestors. Um, various parishes have shared their records on the Louisiana Clerk's Portal again, and of course, um, in Orleans you want to go to orleanscivilclerk.com. That is where conveyances and probate records are um, generally held more recently. And um, older conveyance records are also there as well. The probate records, however, are with us. Um, for Jefferson, um, you'll be interested in conveyance and probate through JP Clerk of Court. In Baton Rouge, it's EBR Clerk of Court with um, some a sub-department that actually focuses on uh, getting you those records for genealogy purposes. Um, St. Tammany, uh, you'll also want to check. St. Tammany has a wonderful um, uh, Clerk of Court archives department, so I highly recommend them. In Terrebonne, which is HOMA, you'll want to look at the TerrebonneClerk.org. In Calcasieu, which is Lake Charles, West Texas, uh, Cal Clerk of Court. Rapides is Alexandria, that's Rapides Clerk, and Shreveport is Caddo Clerk. I picked these um, to highlight because these are the largest um, population centers in the state. Of course, every parish does have its own clerk of court. It's important to note that their record keeping varies from parish to parish. You know, each parish has a different amount of money, a different amount of expertise, and different historic events, whether it be fire, flood, et cetera, that may have wiped out records. So it is always important to go to each uh, parish individually and find out what they do actually have available. Um, library genealogy departments. We're not the only one in the state, of course. Um, it's very, uh, we love Jefferson Parish, which is our immediate neighbor, the one who uh, contains um, the rest of Metro New Orleans, such as the suburbs of Metairie and, and Kenner. Um, we love them. Uh, they have a wonderful uh, website with tons of links uh, on there, uh, there that I really enjoy. Um, Baton Rouge has a wonderful genealogy department as well. They uh, are housed in the Baton Rouge room. They offer lots of online programming. They're wonderful. Uh, St. Tammany, the same. They have a wonderful genealogy department. Uh, Calcasieu has a specific branch that's great for West Louisiana genealogy. Shreveport as well for North 
Louisiana genealogy, and Homa for, for Southeast. So one of the special things that's in a unique situation to Orleans Parish is the parish court records. So we're essentially the parish that has made the most amount of records uh, most easily accessible, and that's through family search and um, other methods. Uh, so we, as the city archives, are in a unique position in that we are not supposed to be the official repository of the Orleans Parish records, but due to um, you know some um, twist of fate in the 1970s, we did end up with the records. So the city of New Orleans is the city and it has a municipal government and it resides in the exact same boundaries or coterminous as Orleans Parish, which is the county slash parish government. Generally, each side maintains its records as it sees fit, but we have come to hold a lot of the uh, parish records, particularly the parish court records, over time, simply because uh, there was never necessarily a parish, um, organized parish system invented beyond each agency. So for Orleans Parish court records, we're the official repository for the old ones. That's 1804 through 1926 for civil, and 1830 through 1932 for criminal. As I said, they were deposited for, with us by the courts in the 1970s and 80s, and we retain everything that they gave us. If we don't have it, they just didn't transfer it to us. Um, it was missing in the original transfer. Uh, the genealogically significant, quote unquote, i.e. the probate or you know the succession, the uh, wills, the um, inheritance, the divorces, the emancipations of minors and slaves, and suits against successions, those were all transferred to us and they were microfilmed by the Genealogical Society of Utah in the late 80s and early 90s. And that's what's available on familysearch.org now. The criminal courts are largely unfilmed, but they do have partial indexing. And there are other places that you may come across the docket number from a criminal court case of a relative. And they're well worth um, requesting if you can find a docket number at least. Indexing varies from court to court. The, the way to request a court record is you will need to know the name of the court and at least a date or a docket number. That's the only way we'll be able to find a case. There's not very much, um, there's definitely not much digital indexing by name, almost none. And um, it's uh, it really what we need is, is the court name and a date or a docket number. Um, depending on the court, you may need to spend some time going through chronological docket books to find a docket number. Some of those are digitized on familysearch.org and some are on microfilm. It just depends. Um, photocopies of records from other parishes have to be obtained from that clerk of court. We have some like on microfilm, but you would need to come in to use the microfilm because it's not, um, we don't hold the rights to the microfilm, even though we have the microfilm available. But that's um, what the select probate records for 48 additional parishes are from the Genealogical Society of Utah are there. But just call us and we can tell you what's available. What are court records? We have wills, successions, estate inventories, divorces, emancipations, civil lawsuits, criminal cases. Court records are a lot of stuff. Um, we have an explanation of the Orleans Parish court system on our website. Uh, just to put it shortly, as time passed, we had varying courts, some with, um, depending on in the early days, like state jurisdiction, most with only local jurisdiction, and many with hyper-local jurisdiction. At one point in uh, one of our late, in our late 18th century court system um, from 1846 to 1880, there were up to eight different courts. Um, some handled specialized uh, purposes and some were just neighborhood courts for the growing city. Um, an explanation of most of that can be found on our website there. Indexing, because it's different for everything, of course, let me tell you about it. So for the court of probates, which was the early, early court, those are available in book form at a reference desk, which you know you don't have to worry about. We do have indexing for them on our website. 
and the indexing is also available on Family Search. The second district court, which is sort of you can think of as Court of Probates, the sequel, um, same situation. We have them indexed on our website, so searchable, and they're also available at familysearch.org. Now, um, civil district court, the uh, like, which is the the court system that continues to exist today, uh, that took over generally everything and just really subdivided um, the courts into really only civil and criminal. So it's either a civil ma manner or a criminal matter after 1880. There's not several different um, courts. But so we have some indexing available on our website, not, not comprehensive. We do have, of course, a book form and docket books from 1904 to, so, so starting in 1904 from 19 to 26, you do need to come look at our docket books on microfilm. Um, and please see the court records chart handout, which I apologize. I think it is at the end of your handout. If it's not, I'll just have them let me know and I'll make sure that you guys can get a copy. This is an example of indexing for the courts, and this is actually an example of the very limited criminal district court indexing that we offer. Um, see here, that's 1880 to 1918 in this defendant's index. And then that's the rear image. The front image is the court of probates, the early succession court. And as you can see, um, it gives you like the name, so you can search our website by name and hopefully get some of these folks. You can see the succession year. It'll tell you if there's a will in an inventory or not. It's There isn't always. Um, and then of course the year for each. But this is just an example of what those indexes look like. Um, other types of court records, as mentioned, emancipations uh, of slaves. In Orleans Parish specifically, emancipations were handled by the judge of parish court and they received the petition of the slave owner and presented it to the police jury for consideration. Those records are available from 1814 to 1843 and they are digitized in a place that I will mention later or is also available in the court records handout at, or sheet at the end of the handout. Um, minors who are above the age of 18 but under the age of 21 could come into possession of property through succession and could petition for judicial emancipation, meaning they can manage their own affairs. And then there were interdictions. These were, um, it was essentially um, uh, something that we can still do today, which is when they were concerned that the person, the owner of the property was no longer mentally sound, uh, they could bring an interdiction against them. Lawsuits, of course. Um, as we love to say, chances are fairly good that someone who did business in New Orleans either sued or got sued. There are a lot of these. These are not generally microfilmed, but you will, you can find out um, from various sources, like whether it be the newspaper, family lore, etc., that something may have happened. Um, the criminal court records, you may not want to find an ancestor in these records, but they do tell fascinating stories. And again, most are not microfilmed, you will have to look at a docket books and then go through a special process with us if you want to see it. I'll explain that in a moment. In accessing court records. So if a record is available on microfilm or digitally, that's how you have to view it. Uh, many records, of course, have deteriorated due to physical handling. These records have been removed to permanent preservation and now are only released to museums for exhibits. When a court record isn't digitized, such as in the case of the criminal court or uh, non-probate, non-succession records, there is a process for checking availability and granting access. First of all, you do need to email us a request to check availability with the court name, docket number, and defendant. And that is our general email address right there, archivist at nolalibrary.org. It's also on our website. You should do this around a month before you hope to visit. Now I don't say plan, I say hope. We have to check and see if the records still exist because there is no guarantee that the docket was successfully transferred to us. Once the request is received, we will go to the original records and dig through them manually. It is a dirty business, but once we go through them to search for the docket number, if we find it, we'll let you know and then we'll give you a possible date for viewing. Depending on the state of the record, this could be anywhere from three days to two weeks. And by the state of the record, I mean, is it flattened or unflattened? 
What does that mean? So basically, when the uh, original court records were kept um, by the barristers, by the lawyers, they were kept in a special type of filing cabinet that required triple and quarter folding of the record. So these early 1800 records uh, made on um, starched papers with animal lignin and stuff like that uh, were triple and quadruple folded, stuffed in these drawers, and then not touched again for over 100 years. The paper had become very brittle, and you couldn't just unfold them without breaking them. So we go through a rehumidification process and flattening process when that's the case. And that requires us to put those records in a humidification chamber for anywhere up to two weeks, depending on the, the size of the case. And then only after that are we able to carefully flatten and um, remove the moisture from the records and make them into a serviceable copy that you can use. We will notify you if we're unable to find the record. We're only able to supply what we have. Of course, record searches are suspended during busy times. Here's an example of the succession of Williams, William Goldsbury, and this is a, a listing of debts um, or claims against his estate. So um, these are all people making claims against the estate and how much they need to be paid out as determined by the executors. Digitized court records. So as I said, family search is your place. This is an example of kind of what it looks like they have the Orleans court records, Orleans parish estate files. So the court records are generally like the docket books when they've managed to digitize them. The estate files are the early uh, succession records and the second district case files are the late succession records. And then of course the will books span the entire time. Those are organized by date incidentally. Um, so, They've been digitized, they aren't text searchable. You can't type in a name. These are image only collections. So generally you do need a date or a docket number to find them even on familysearch.org. Um, this is a quick listing. Um, Orleans Parish Estate Files, they have indexing and imaging. Um, the Second District Court, again, indexing and images complete. Uh, there is, it is not 100% complete for the earlier records, however. Um, and there are some gaps uh, from 1846 to 1851. Um, Orleans Parish Will Books, Orleans Parish, Orleans Court Records, later 1822 to 1880. These are the docket books and indexes again. And in all of our collection descriptions on our website, you can find uh, links to these where, where we can offer them. This is an example of what it looks like. Uh, it's generally a very clear image. You can zoom in on it quite a lot. Uh, as you can see under D, Doria Court, Marianne, I say that you can't, so there's no way to search for Doria Court. They do have it linked, or like they do have the text put here once you've gotten to the record, but if you typed in Doria Court, you wouldn't necessarily get a hit for this. Our records on Louisiana Digital Library. So um, many of our records are available on the state's consortium digital library, Louisiana Digital Library. Um, while our digitized offerings are not necessarily in it, our digitized court records have been parts of other collections done by LSU specifically. Uh, our records are in LSU's Bicentennial Purchase Collection and their Free People of Color Collection. The website can sometimes be slow, but the image quality is exceptional. And this is also the early, only method for uh, viewing some of the earliest records in the emancipations. Um, the Bicentennial Purchase Collection under LSU in particular has the early Court of Pleas digitized. It has the early city and county court civil suits digitized, uh, county court criminal suits, and city court criminal suits. So as you can see, these are very early from 1804 to 1813, but they are digitized in their entirety on this website. Uh, the LSU's Free People of Color collection, also on Louisiana Digital Library, um, offer the emancipation petitions, which are what is very interesting. They also have um, some specifically like uh, emancipation dockets, uh, other free persons of color enslaved documents, indentures, and much more digitized. And this Free People of Color collection is essentially comprised from multiple New Orleans institutions. 
African American genealogy resources. So while African Americans do exist under all of the previously listed collections, I just wanted to uh, do a couple of targeted notes here. Um, so one of the specific things that is available through Ancestry is the New Orleans, Louisiana Slave Manifest from 1807 to 1860. Those are very helpful. They're available on microfilm through our, through our department. Um, we do have these records specifically cobbled together in the, um, in the genealogy guide, so please check that out. It's under African American Records. And as I just said, the LSU Free People of Color database just includes digitizations of all sorts of records relating to African American genealogy um, that are just beyond even just our contributions to that collection. Um, one of my favorite websites, if you aren't always familiar, already familiar with it, is the uh, University of North Carolina at Greenville Race and Slavery Petitions Project, um, the African American Collections and the, and the, big, the big ones, Ancestry, Heritage, Quest, and Fold 3. Um, there is also Slave Voyages, essentially um, centered around a database created by the University of New Orleans, uh, Gwendolyn Midlow Hall, um, which also there is a center at the University of New Orleans um, named after her called the Midlow Center. So Slave Voyages is a record is a uh, website organized around the databases that she went through in Louisiana. Um, and of course, slavebiographies.org databases, those um, feature more work by Gwendolyn Midlow Hall and um, Brian K. Mitchell, who uh, is actually a descendant of um, a very important New Orleans fig figure named Oscar James Dunn. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about our YouTube site, but we have a wonderful presentation by him on there as well. Immigration and naturalization records. We do have some special claim to these in limited amounts. So we have passenger arrivals, but those aren't the unique ones. Um, those are actually available through Ancestry and Heritage Quest. Sure, you can come look at the microfilm in our department, but that's the same microfilm that anybody that had these ordered from the National Archives back in the day. Um, passenger arrivals for other ports, of course, also Ancestry.com and Heritage Quest. Um, in immigration records, such as passenger list, they have a lot of this sort of information. They have the name of the passenger, hopefully the gender, the age, hopefully the port of origin. That doesn't necessarily um, mean um, that's uh, or I'm sorry, this country slash city of origin is what I meant to write there, I apologize. The port of departure, the date of arrival in the US, the name of the ship, and the passenger's place of residence in her original country is not given. It's generally the port of departure, unless of course they do happen to list occasionally the city. Um, it's important to know if you don't already that before 1906, there was no requirement in the United States for an individual to be naturalized, to live, own a business and die here. Um, really the only reason you needed to be na naturalized was to vote. But people would live their entire lives without being naturalized. Uh, there was no issue with that. Um, Pre-1906 naturalizations, of course, um, give very little information because it wasn't uh, of legal interest to the federal state yet. Uh, it, of course, the amount of information explodes after um, the efforts to regulate come into play. So we have um, naturalization records on microfilm from the specific local courts, um, and that's actually both the federal court, which is known as the Eastern District Court, and our local courts, our civil courts from our court system, Orleans court system. We offer search and copy services for those naturalization records for a small fee. Uh, if you send us a copy of the index card below or, or for an additional fee, we can just look at, look at the index for you. We'll um, look at the microfilmed court records and mail back a copy if we find it. We can, as I said, perform the index search for an, occasional, for an additional fee. If we don't have what you're looking for, you can still inquire with the federal body, which is uh, U.S. Um, oh gosh, it's the U.S. Uh, Center for Immigration Services gov. That's USCIS gov. They do charge a pretty penny, though. I understand. Um, so just just kind of uh, to reiterate, 
naturalization records of various types, that means declarations of intentions, certificates, oaths, uh, were issued in Orleans Parish civil courts, which are the kind of court records that we have. Orleans Parish criminal courts, it doesn't have anything to do with their criminal status. It just, you went and got naturalized at the court nearest to your house is what you did. Um, indexing a course for both of these on Ancestry and Heritage Quest. Um, and then the district court, this is the federal court for the Eastern District of Louisiana. We have declarations and petitions for um, that. And of course, again, the indexes are available on microfilm um, and Ancestry and Heritage Quest. Uh, we're winding down. We're getting into the final stretch here. Thank you for sticking with me. But um, we have photograph collections. We have around 50 digitized collections with tens of thousands of images. Um, they're primarily photographs uh, about city business, the business of the municipal government of New Orleans. But we do our best to describe and note as much as we can in each of the descriptions so you can search them. They're available to anyone, anywhere, anytime. This is how you would get to them. We have two sections. We're in the process of moving into a slightly different display thing, but you can search both um, by going to uh, just archives.nolalibrary.org and clicking on the uh, photo section, and it will give links to both. But that's kind of an example of what it looks like down there. Um, this is where you find it on our main page. It's under digital collections, photographs and digital collections. Aside, because I didn't mention it, but we also have a programs and presentations section. If you click on the programs and presentations, you can get links to all of our YouTube videos that we've completed so far. This is something new that we started during the pandemic, but that we really enjoy doing. And uh, we have incredibly extensive um, descriptions of, uh, we did a, um, uh, early in the pandemic, we did a six part series with the Archdiocese about how to navigate their records, which is really w wonderful, as well as other things like, uh, Brian K. Mitchell's description of the significance of Oscar Dunn and um, other uh, programs with local uh, genealogists such as Gaynell Brady, who's wonderful. We love working with her. Uh, you can find YouTube did, um, YouTubes of all of those under our programs and presentations section. Here's some samples of the pictures. As you can see, very city oriented. Just as to do a quick describe, um, we can do, uh, we can see, uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, Mayor Victor Scuro doing the A-Team walk with the city councilors in front of City Hall in the early 60s. And um, in the middle bottom, we can see uh, Mayor Landrieu with uh, Gerald Ford at the Conference of Mayors in the 70s. And then over on the bottom right, that is Ernest Dutch Morial doing a groundbreaking with some kids, allowing them to do a sledgehammer on the wall before they re, uh, they work more on um, renovating uh, the moonwalk and the uh, French market in the quarter. And then these are more of the uh, sort of just like uh, public works types things. Like we have a lot of records from the Department of Public Works, the Department of Streets, um, and various other things. And you can just see all sorts of images of the construction of New Orleans in you know, the middle of the night, or 20th century. We also have a fully um, indexed mugshot collection. Now it's pretty limited. It covers really the late 1800s to early 1910s uh, and teens. Um, it is all um, generally uh, non-felony offenses. There's not going to be any major cases like like the madams of Storyville, such as Lulu White, she was a major crime or major murders. There's not going to be any murders in these, but we have index. These are available in the digital uh, photograph collections. You can search by name in those to perhaps see if you can find um, a hit. But there's about, I want to say about 5,000 of them total. It's well worth looking at. It's just fascinating.